All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome, my name is Jamie Hunt. I'm the Assistant Director of Programs. <laughs> uh, if everyone could please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Graduates, the flag is on the stage in front of you, just to your left. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. All right. Thank you. As we're finding our way back into our new normal, we're super excited for this graduation as it's a little unusual. It is the first time that we have had a blended class of guide dog recipients and service dog recipients. So we're super happy. Uh, welcome you all and thank you for joining us. And thank you for joining us if you're watching from Facebook Live. So before we get started, uh, there is a, a big group of people that I really want to thank. Um, Without these people, we would not be standing here today. And so I'm going to start with a poem from an unknown author, and it will give you a, a little clue as to who we're talking about. Why be a volunteer? It's not for money. It's not for fame. It's not for any personal gain. It's just love of fellow man. It's just to send a helping hand. It's just to give a tith of self. That's something you can't buy with wealth. It's not medals won with pride, it's for that feeling deep inside. It's that reward down in your heart, it's that feeling that you've been a part of helping others far and near that makes you be a volunteer. healthy, feeding them lots of food so that we can continue to produce successful guide dog and service dog teams. So let's give a big round of applause for all of our breeder hosts. <laughs> Next we have our nursery volunteers. Uh, the amount of volunteers that we have in our nursery is out of this world. It goes from overnighters who are staying with the newborns, we've got housekeeping, puppy huggers, which is everybody's favorite job, uh, and our preschool volunteers. And these guys are all helping to socialize these dogs and get them ready for their future service. Uh, so let's give all the nursery volunteers a big round of applause. <laughs> Next, we have our Head Start volunteers. So at about seven weeks of age, our puppies come down to the main kennel, and they will join Head Start for about a week. And these volunteers continue that socialization process and get them ready to go on to their puppy raiser homes. So let's give a big round of applause to all of our, our Head Start volunteers. <laughs> Next we have our puppy raisers. You are going to hear a lot about puppy raisers today. You are going to get to hear from some of our puppy raisers. Uh, we could not do it without you guys. Uh, you guys take these puppies into your home uh, and get them ready and prepare them uh, for their formal training and we can't thank you enough so thank you to all the puppy raisers. So along with our puppy raisers we have this next group is uh, a very very important group to us and this is our area leaders and for those of you who don't know our area leaders are volunteers they're running all the month Everyone, and we can't do it without them. So big round of applause to all of our area leaders. <laughs> then we have our kennel volunteers and our vet department volunteers. They're helping out down in the kennel doing enrichment or we're helping on surgery days. So big round of applause for our kennel and vet department volunteers. 
And then we have our transporters. So when we merged with TLC in the beginning of 2020, we now have to transport dogs all the way from Sacramento down to San Diego. And these guys uh, dedicate their time to make sure all those transports happen. So round of applause for our transporters. <laughs> then we have our furlough volunteers. So our furlough volunteers help out for the dogs that are in for training. Sometimes they'll get them out on the weekends, get them back into a home environment. So big round of applause to all of our furlough volunteers. <laughs> and then we come to our dorm volunteers. So during our guide dog classes, which are three weeks, uh, we do have volunteers that stay from Saturday afternoon until Monday morning. That gives our instructors uh, one day off during during the week, <laughs> which they appreciate. Um, and so we couldn't do that without you. Thank you guys. A uh, big round of applause for our dorm volunteers. <laughs> and then we have admin volunteers, puppy department volunteers, maintenance volunteers. As you guys can see, uh, we just really, really appreciate. We have volunteers every single day here. They make it possible. Uh, so we can do what we can do and stand up here today um, and congratulate these teams. So please, let's give one more big round of applause to all of the volunteers that help us out. <laughs> Next, I would like to just say a quick thanks to all the staff here. You know, it's been a really challenging couple of years going through this pandemic. And we are a family. Sometimes we're a little dysfunctional, but we are a family and we came together and this is all the reason why we do it is for a day like today. So big round of applause to all the wonderful staff. So teams like the ones that you guys are gonna be seeing up here today are only made possible because a puppy raiser has welcomed a puppy into their home. Uh, they've given that dog the foundation that it needs uh, in order for it to change someone's life. And mother nature has been uh, very, plentiful with us uh, over the last couple of months, we can say. Uh, we've got a lot of litters on the ground. We have got more litters on the way. And so we are really out looking for puppy raisers. So please, um, if you want to be a part of the amazing picture that you're seeing up here today, uh, please uh, think about volunteering by raising a GDA TLC puppy. If you want more information on that, you can always text the word on that. So it is now my honor uh, and my pleasure to introduce to you our president, Mr. Russell Gitlin. Well, first of all, I'd just like to welcome everybody here. We're excited to sort of get back to somewhat normalcy. Um, there's 100 plus people here, I believe, last I checked. And it's, it's been a challenge, as Jamie said, just to, just to keep the place going uh, with all the restrictions and the different COVID protocols. But we think that we're, we're working real hard to keep everybody safe and at the same time providing uh, the mission that we set out to, to, to fulfill, which is to provide uh, service dogs for those in need. And, uh, and, and to my staff, they've done a great job and they continue to, to, uh, to do exactly that and make you guys proud, all you guys that are either volunteers or raising money or giving money or whatever the case may be and and we just we just appreciate all that we appreciate being here with that said it's a privilege to be here with you today because we have quite a bit to celebrate first the eight new beautiful service dog teams that are stepping into a new chapter of their lives with them we celebrate all the people who went into making this moment possible and you heard Jamie speak a lot about a lot of them in fact Jamie probably spoke about all of them um, so I don't need to repeat that, but there's a lot that goes into this place. It takes a village, they all say. But as you're aware, today has extra meaning. Our first dual graduation as a merged organization. A tremendous... <laughs> ...to transform lives through partnerships with service dogs. And with eight graduating teams sitting in front of me, I can tell you that we are doing pre precisely that. The road to merging TLC into our program has been a long one. Having TLC under our umbrella means more than just providing new types of service dog. With it brings added responsibilities. Autism rates are climbing, growing by 10% over the last five years. 
which means that one in 54 children will now have an autism diagnosis. When it comes to our veterans, it's an even starker reality. Every day in the United States, we lose 22 veterans to suicide, a horrible truth that is now our responsibility to change. My old boss used to say, in negotiations, just like in basketball, you, you never let the ball stop bouncing. Because if you let the ball stop bouncing, the game is over. I'm not the biggest sports guy, but I knew it was the, his way of telling us to never give up. While today is certainly a moment of celebration, it's also a reminder that our work is never finished. Transforming a life takes all of us. When one of our veterans' clients, Lewis, was here, he took his dog down for a vet checkup. When he came back up, he told me, Russ, I was in awe at the line of cars backed up with people waiting to pick up puppies. Knowing that all the team is here working to bring me a service dog brings me much solace. When, when I can't sleep at night, I remember that there are thousands of people who have my back. Even in the most challenging of moments, we must never give up. There are people out there depending on us. Listen, I know that it's not always easy, but look at what, we've, what we have here today as a result. Eight new guide and service dog teams are about to take the plunge into a new, better chapter of their lives. A chapter you helped write through hard work and dedication. All of this is to say that we are going to keep pushing this thing. Right now, there, are, there is a veteran who won't leave his house because they have PTSD. A child with autism whose life is void of friendship. A person who's blind that doesn't feel safe traveling on their own. Luckily, they have us. A team of thousands willing to do anything and everything they can do to provide them with a service dog partner that will transform their, transform their lives. We are their hope for a better future. How about a big round of applause for everybody here? So I just want to touch real quick on the doings around campus. Uh, those of you who don't know, we're in the middle of a big... Uh, we did the puppy nurse, which is done, open and running. And now we did there's like half of the kennels are done and the other half are in process right now we did that because we didn't want to shut down um, that's the only reason we did half and half so pretty soon it's all going to be done it's beautiful if you've been watching facebook mariah's been posting updates on that um, it's due to you guys that we're able to do such a thing it's beautiful from what i'm hearing the dogs really believe it or not they're telling me this uh, isn't, isn't, that I, isn't that I talk to a dog or anything like that, but the dogs really enjoy it. They, they seem to respond better to their new surroundings. So we're excited about all the doings around the campus. And uh, pretty soon we'll be able to open it up and show you guys. And we're excited about that day as it comes. Um, Las Vegas. We're doing Las Vegas this year. You know, I, I had talked to my board of directors and to my and we need to keep doing events like Las Vegas. So this year, uh, the week before Thanksgiving is only, we'll be doing a country western theme out there, rodeo to be exact. So all, some of you guys already have that stuff in your closet. Other ones go buy it. Uh, but uh, come on out to Vegas and enjoy the time with us. There's, you know, just so those of you that don't know, there's three days of fun. Uh, the first day is an ATV run with uh, clay shooting if you're into that. The next day is a golf tournament. Of course, Saturday is the Bang Up Gala. Um, so it's three days. You can come out for three days and really enjoy. We negotiated good rates with, uh, with Caesars Entertainment. So please come out and enjoy us. It's a great way to support Guide Dogs of America. Um, so it's the 18th through the 20th, and they would kill me if I didn't tell you that, so I'm telling you that. All right. Um, team sponsorships. Our first sponsorship uh, to award is Jane Huey, a good friend from Arizona who unfortunately could not be with us here today. She has supported us greatly over the years, and this time she has sponsored the team of Becky Griffin and Guide Dog Letty. This is our highest sponsorship level, and Jane in particular wanted uh, this to go to one of our veterans. So thank you, Jane, for your team sponsorship of Becky and Letty. We 
have uh, four puppy sponsorships to award today. These, these great folks donated $5,000 to sponsor a pup. They have followed in the path from the day it went home with its puppy raiser until it returned to GDA to begin formal training. So the first one is Sandy Bennett and Roscoe. We would like to thank our good friend Sandy Bennett for her sponsorship of Roscoe. I'm sure Sandy is watching this ceremony from her home in Kentucky. So hello, Sandy, and we thank you so much for all your continued support of our program. We wish you could be with us here today. How about a big round of applause for my friend, Sandy Bennett. The Carlson Muir Family Foundation sponsored Brazzle. Our second puppy to be sponsored is Brazzle. He is generously uh, sponsored by the Carlson Muir Family Foundation. Thank you, Beth and Jim Carlson. I'll make it today. How about a big round of applause? In case you don't know it, the Machinist Union is a major sponsor of Guide Dogs America, and, uh, and a lot of the districts and locals out there, they, they take their time, and they, they raise a lot of money all year, and they want to sponsor dogs and so on and so forth. But District 8 did this. They sponsored Letty. Uh, we'd like to thank District 8 out of Chicago. They faithfully sponsor a pu puppy each year. And this year, Letty was the proud recipient of that sponsorship. They will be watching this ceremony online, and we send them their congratulations from Letty. And uh, how about a big round of applause? <laughs> My friend Janie Connors is in the, is in the uh, audience today uh, from Sepulveda Building. I got that right. Where is she? She, she should be proud. I, I, I think I said it right. Didn't I, Janie? So... So uh, Janie sponsored, Janie and her company sponsored Mamba. Um, and uh, finally, we want to thank our, our good friend Janie Connors from Sepulveda Building. They put on an amazing golf tournament each year and donate all the proceeds to us. She not only does that, but whatever they raise, just so you know what a wonderful lady this is, she doubles it. So if they raise 20 grand, she throws 20,000 of her own money, and she's, she's unbelievable. They have supported us for many years and sponsored more dogs than I can recall. And this time around, they sponsored Mamba, and Janie is here with us today to wish Mamba and Mark all the luck in the war with our new partnership. Janie, can you please join me on stage? Where is Yvette at? Yvette, where are you? Ah, there we go. Okay. Get away here. So a any of you that haven't seen Mamba, where's Mamba at? Mamba's, Mamba's right there. Mamba is a beautiful dog. And Janie, today we'd like to present you with this beautiful picture of Mamba. Thank you. There's Mamba there, and, and we want to say with gratitude and appreciation for your puppy sponsorships of guide dog Mamba. Graduated class 417 and contribute to the overall success of our service dog program presented to Sepulveda Building Materials by Guide Dogs of America. Thank you, thank you very much. We appreciate you very much. Do you want to say a few words? No. Okay. Thank you. Harness sponsorships. Finally, we have the following harness sponsorships. Uh, the Habinger Family Harness Sponsorship of Roscoe. I'll do, I'll do all of them and then we'll give them a big round of applause. WT Fireworks Harness Sponsorship for Letty, Inland Empire's Puppy Raisers Harness Sponsorship for Brazel, the Orange County Puppy Raisers Harness Sponsor for Mamba, Denise Taylor from Orange County Puppy Raisers Harness Sponsorship for uh, Livia. How about it? A final reminder that we are only able to provide these amazing dogs thanks to the support of thousands of individuals foundations, corporations, uh, unions uh, for this. I'd like, to, I'd like to say thank you from, from me, Russ Gitlin, on behalf of my staff. I'd like to welcome you to this graduation ceremony. We've got a lot to do today, so I'm going to get off this stage and just say God bless, thank everybody here. Appreciate it. I, I know I forget something. How about uh, a big round of applause for Aaron with TLC? Hello, how's everybody? You want to see service dogs? We have some of those. <laughs> uh, my name is Erin Vehar. I'm the client services training manager for uh, the service dog program with Guide Dogs of America. And I'm going to be introducing you all to our service dog teams that are graduating today. 
Um, I'll keep it quick, but I just want to connect a couple of dots for everybody so you know what we're talking about and what's going on here. Um, we've got our graduates here, and the process for our service dogs to make it to this day and become service dogs um, comes from a lot of different directions. So uh, we have puppy raisers who raised some of our service dogs, and then we also have trainers in our prison program who might have raised the, our service dogs from puppyhood, and some that might have uh, received the, train, the dogs once they've been uh, raised by a puppy raiser, and then eventually they come into, uh, into my department and go to these wonderful clients. So you're gonna be hearing um, some videos, some letters, uh, some speeches from different people that have been involved in that process, um, and also from our clients. And um, I just wanna say thank you to Sean and Sydney, um, our trainers from the guide dog side, they have been super welcoming of us, um, being on campus with them and sharing space and creating this, uh, this event with both guide dogs and service dogs. It's been really special to be able to see um, them and their students in the same time as us and our students. So um, thank you to them. And also to uh, our service dog training staff. Um, in particular, we have um, trainers who are not here today. Um, Nicole, Sonia, Stephanie, Suzanne. Um, we've got Lisa and Victoria. And um, all of these people help to make this process um, happen. So uh, we see you and we appreciate you. And we're going to do our best uh, going forward with these clients to, to honor the, the work that everybody's put into these dogs. Um, my students, I'm so proud of you guys. <laughs> you come, we, our students go through um, three weeks of online training and then they come into the class um, in person and they kind of hit the ground running. They learn their materials online and when they get here, we're like, okay, here we go, let's do it. And, um, and they do it and they did it and they're here and um, they're gonna probably share a little bit about that with you. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start introducing them. And they're gonna come up. So first we have Eric. Eric is, go ahead and come up, Eric. <laughs> Eric is a 31-year-old retired Marine Purple Heart recipient <laughs> who deployed to Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. His service dog, Astro, will support him by performing grounding behaviors and assisted is assisting with daily living tasks. Hello, everyone. I actually would like to thank my wife, Crystal. Without her, wouldn't be here. <laughs> uh, she helped push me to get the service animal, and already my life has changed. Only a week, so that's big. Um, this is very emotional for me, so I'm going to try to be quick. But I would like to thank the staff, everybody that helped Astro, raise Astro, especially the prison trainers. I'd like to thank them. And I would like to give my class that they were very supportive in this. And I would like to give them special thanks as well. dog trainer jokes were funny sometimes. Um, okay, so we've got a video from one of the trainers in our prison program in Mule Creek State Prison near Sacramento. And we're going to play that video. Um, in the video, there is a trainer sitting on the floor uh, with a black lab service dog, that's Astro, lying across his lap. First, I would like to thank Warden Capello 
Captain Avalos, Esherman, and all the GDA and TOCAD staff, especially our staff facilitator, Ms. Maples, who believes in us more than we believe in ourselves. Thank you. To all my fellow Pooch members, I could not have done this with, without you all. Oh, now A.W. Patterson, Ms. Thomas, and, and Ms. Chisel, thank you all. Thank you for always having our backs and helping us create hope. Working with Astro has been a blast and an honor. This gentle giant um, gave his all every second of every day we train. In doing so, he gave me the opportunity to give back. Astro filled my heart and life with purpose and a greater sense of responsibility and selflessness. When I felt like I had no worth, felt alone, unwanted, or depressed, he was there for me, reminding me that all of this was not true. The peace program for me is truly compassion and action. With every click, every cue train, I know we make an attempt to say, I'm sorry. I'm here to help and I'm here for you. I, I do this not to fix or excuse away my past, but to help heal our futures. I leave you with a quote of hope I, I wrote. Hope is like car keys. You may lose them from time to time, but don't worry. Astro will help, always help you bring bring it back to you. By Mr. Rivers. Always your buddy. Thank you. If you like that, you're gonna love this. We have a special guest here today um, who actually was also Astro's trainer in our prison program in Mule Creek State Prison. His name is Lucas. Come on up. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, it's actually, it's a, oh, it's a privilege to be here. And it's actually, uh, I mean, I would like to say thank you to GDA, TOCAD, and everyone that's here today, and especially uh, Astro is actually one of my best friends, and actually, uh, while incarcerated, I learned, I joined the program to make a difference and to make amends for uh, my wrongs, and knowing that helping other individuals has made a big impact on, in myself. So I thank you all for actually giving me this privilege to speak here in front of everyone, and Astro is a good dog, and I see the ripple effect that doing good and helping others actually is very rewarding and I know why making a difference in putting my efforts and my all like uh, everybody in the push program that's incarcerated like I said we have made mistakes um, but giving back has felt more rewarding than being the person that I was or I don't want to be defined for for something that I did I want to be defined for something that I, where I'm going. So at the same time, I'm actually grateful that Astro is, uh, seems happy and is going to a good home with Eric, and I appreciate it for your service. Um, it's an honor to actually be able to be of service to you too. Um, I know it's uh, something that giving back means a lot to me too. So thank you for your time. Okay, Christina is next. Christina is a veteran service dog recipient and her new service dog partner is Addie. Come on up, Christina. Um, Addie was raised by GDA puppy raiser Celeste from the South Bay Puppy Group. And Christina is a Navy veteran who became a social worker after separating with the Navy. And she's now helping her fellow, fellow veterans uh, find success in higher education. Thank you. Congratulations. 
had a really long speech prepared, but um, I don't want you all crying over this, so I'm just kidding. I really didn't have anything. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone um, who had, you know, who helped raise Addie, train her, uh, to TLC and GDA, my family, my husband over there who stuck with me through everything. Um, so thanks, everyone. And we've got, we've got uh, a couple of letters uh, related to Addie's training. So bear with me for just a sec. We're going to read them. So the first letter is from Addie's puppy raiser, Christina, or I'm sorry, Christina is Christina. Uh, it's from Addie's puppy raiser, Celeste, of the South Bay Puppy Group. And I'm going to read you her words. Dear Christina, congratulations on your partnership with Addie. I'm so excited for you both. I was only a small part of Team Addie, but every day was a fun time. Addie loves to work, and we both really enjoyed filming all of our advanced training for the canine development department during the worst of the COVID shutdown. When I got the call that Addie was... Addie, since, she prefer, since her preferred way to meet and greet people was to lick them all over. We, that might be true. <laughs> we, hoped that, uh, we hoped that would be okay and that that'd be something they'd help her work on. Plus, we didn't know if she'd want to stay if she didn't get her nightly bedtime snack of a peanut butter Kong at 7 p.m. We're all so happy that Addie apparently convinced everyone to do it her way and that she stayed to complete the training. She knows how to use her eyes to get what she wants. At night, you might find she sits there, just a little hunched over, head hanging, and those big ready a bit before 7 p.m. To Addie's service dog trainers, thank you for making this team a success. I'm, very, I'm a very proud puppy raiser, and I wish this new team all the best. And we've got one more letter on Addie's behalf. Um, this letter is from the trainer who completed Addie's trainer at the Camp Pendleton Base Brig. Um, so a member of our prison training program from, uh, from Camp Pendleton Base Brig. Um, and we have a few questions that was asked to this trainer and this, is, uh, this was the responses that they provided. Um, what do you remember most about Addie or what was your first impression? I will remember I remember and will totally miss her adorable waves and bows. She is such a character that you wouldn't want to let go. The most I remember about Addie is her sweet temperament and her love to offer comfort when Also true. <laughs> um, how has the dog affected you in a positive way? Growing up, I had dogs. They hunted. They protected the compound. Never in my world have I ever thought that a dog could do more than fetching and eating chewies. Being in the TLC program has changed a lot of my perspective about animal behavior, specifically dogs. I never knew we could rely on them for emotional support and physical support. I have learned a lot about the dog and their behaviors and a point where everything I do for them is reflected on what I like done to me. I treat them no different. I have matured due to training animals. It is a humbling experience and an emotional journey. I've learned a lot just by training. This dog basically taught me how to be human again. Not that I wasn't a human on the inside, but the experience opened my view on the world on a much bigger spectrum. And what do you hope for this, your dog's client? Uh, this trainer answered, I warmly wish for a strong bond and a lovely relationship for my dog's client. Once you get acquainted, all will be sweet and swift as a flow of a river. The dog Addie will love you. She loves kisses, so be ready for that. Lastly, I hope that you can both learn and understand each other deeply 
so you can both work together and accomplish things together. Thank you. All right, and our last service dog before we move on to guide dogs is Ursula. So we're going to have Maritza and Ursula. Ursula is an autism service dog. Maritza is a 32-year-old mother of a six-year-old daughter with autism. She says the service dog will be a blessing in their lives that will not only help with autism awareness, but also with creating a more independent and happier life for Frida. Hi, everyone. Uh, well, this is Ursula. I just want to thank um, everyone at GDA and um, TLC for making this, all this happen, this mission, this big mission that you guys have. Um, it's, I cannot believe it, what you guys do for, for us families who have uh, a loved one with autism. I know Ursula will be a big help to Frida, my daughter, who is six years old, has severe autism. And there's a lot of challenges with autism, but I know Ursula will help her, and it's already changing uh, my world, our world, turning it upside down. Good dog, good girl. And um, I'm just grateful. Thank you, Erin, an amazing instructor, my classmates, Christina and Eric, who has become my friends now. It all started with Lisa. Thank you so much. I will always remember that first call. And thank you, all of you. Please keep supporting this great mission. And um, I'm just, um, I don't have any words to explain how grateful I am. Thank you, everybody. Oh, and my loving husband. I love you, babe. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Maritza. Uh, we have a video from uh, Ursula's trainer who is currently incarcerated at Mule Creek State Prison in Sacramento area. In this video, a trainer sits on the floor in the prison with a yellow lab service dog, who is Ursula, uh, lying across his lap. the service dogs we've got so I appreciate your time and I'm going to turn it over to Sean who's going to talk about some guide dog teams
Good morning. Uh, everybody, my name is Sean Childs. I was the lead instructor for class uh, 417. Uh, before I introduce the, the uh, teams, I have some people I'd like to thank. Uh, the first being Patty. She works for a development company called Askenazi Development in San Fernando. She gracefully allowed us to utilize her or one of their uh, spaces for our lounge for our basic route in San Fernando. I'd also like to thank uh, uh, Melanie Anderson. She was nice enough to come and uh, uh, let us go home for a night and uh, get some rest uh, on our busy week, our busy 21 days here. Uh, thank you, Melanie. going on the on the right foot for this uh, 21 days of fun uh, I'd also like to uh, thank uh, TLC group for coming in you guys were a awesome little addition to our group adding extra distraction for our guys and just getting to talk uh, dogs that were slightly different was really awesome and for uh, us instructors uh, lastly I'd like to personally thank Sydney Ukashigi uh, Sydney was uh, the other instructor in class. Uh, she continues to blossom as a young, young instructor, and I can't wait to see what she does in the future. Okay, now on to class four, uh, four six, seventeen. I would like to start uh, with a quote from uh, Sir Ch Winston Churchill: "Fear is a reaction; courage is a decision." Twenty-one days ago, five students made the decision. home and start your new journeys and with your new partners enjoy days of fun okay congratulations lives in Yukon, Oklahoma, a suburb of Oklahoma City. She is married with three kids. This is Becky's second guide dog, both from GDA. She is retired from the military as she served in both the Navy and the Air Force. Her husband is also an ex-military. She loves hiking, fishing, outdoors activities, spending time with family and friends. Becky was paired with Letty, uh, a female yellow Labrador retriever. Letty was raised by Nancy Hawthorne and Roy Nitschke, uh, represented today by Nancy. Oh, Nancy didn't come. I, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who worked on uh, getting an awesome partner for myself. Um, I had, I have a guide dog from GDA. And I didn't think that it could happen again, especially finding a partner as great and awesome as, uh, as Letty is here. Um, I want to thank the puppy raisers, because I don't think I could do what they did uh, to raise a dog and then, then give it up. That's a hard one. I also want to thank all those who donated their time, their money, and all their efforts, and I'd like to thank the puppy raised, uh, our teachers, um, our instructors. Uh, they've been great, and I really appreciate everything that, that all of this GDA family does for us. <laughs> She might not have been happy about that. But bear with me, because I'm just really great to be here today, especially at this joint graduation, which I hope in the future will just become a graduation for service dogs, and we won't even make the distinction on 
what dog is doing what job. This is really awesome. So I also want to celebrate today how well Guide Dogs of America, Tender, Lighty, Tender Loving Canine, structured their program. From the moment a puppy is handed to you, actually before it's handed to you, everything's structured to have these puppies succeed. There's the nursery staff, preschool volunteers, Head Start program that start your puppies on your way. There's the puppy department, the kennel staff, the vet department, and those amazing trainers who work their magic, we never know how, with these dogs. Then there are area leaders, who we cannot thank enough. They'll take any call and they'll discuss puppy poop with you at any time. <laughs> and there are puppy raiser friends who are the ones who really understand this journey and are also willing to discuss puppy poop with you at any time. In fact, um, it's just really great to be here. But the very foundation of this program and the success, I think, is the union who had this dream and our administrators. Excuse me. See, page two, Stephanie. That carried it out. So when I first started raising puppies, I knew this was a strong program. But the vision and foundation provided by these people has really been put to the test this past year and a half. And Guide Dogs of America, Tender Loving Canines, rose to the task and steered this program through a pandemic that closed so many things down. So my hats are off to you, and I just think we need to give them a huge round of applause. <laughs> the, this accomplishment can't be minimized. Um, I think my husband and I always knew that Letty was born to be a guide. Yes, all dogs born here are meant to be service dogs, but you never really know. I mean, we have our big red golden retriever at home, Nick. He was once a puppy in training, and he's now our pet. And I'm sure all you puppy raisers out there have your own nicks that now live with you. And when people Well, I never want to jinx it, but in my heart, I thought Letty would be up here on this stage one day. And Letty was a union dog from the start, sponsored by District Lodge 8. So even when we had our pillow incident, or she would leap up at the air, she gets a lot of air. She does really good at that. Um, I still thought she would be a service dog. Throughout her puppy days, Letty was so quick to learn and so loving. We knew she was going to change somebody's life. So here we are. This is the hardest part of puppy raisers, harder than when we turned her in during COVID, where you drove up, you opened the door, and they took your dog and to the kennel. This is harder because this is really goodbye. But page, th page three, Stephanie. <laughs> but you know, now it's time to say goodbye to our sweet Letty Spaghetti. And it's also strange how a task that brings so much joy also brings a little heartache. But it's time. Wonderful as she lives with you and your family and does what she was born to do. And Becky, I only ask one thing of you. I ask that you love Letty Spaghetti as much as we have loved her because she's definitely a dog worth loving. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Mark Hano Hano. Mark is 40 and lives in the Long Beach area with his husband. He works at the Wayfinder Services, a nonprofit that works with blind youth. He teaches independent living skills and assistant technologies to high school age kids and young adults. This is Mark's fourth guide. Uh, but they have sent uh, a statement for Sydney to read. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hey. I wanted to thank everybody. There's there's so many people to thank, but 
uh, being up here for the fourth time, graduating with another dog, I always tell myself, nope, that's it, no more. <laughs> but uh, if there is a place that's uh, very special to my heart, it's the GDA and getting a dog uh, from GDA. Um, I just want all of you to know that the puppy raisers mean so much and, and uh, you guys doing what you do for GDA and, and what the trainers do as well. Um, thank you so much and um, thank everybody for all the roles that you play and being able to provide um, guide dogs and service animals to, to those of us and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, so from the Yang family, first of all, my family and I want to say how sorry we are we could not be there in person to celebrate this fantastic day with all of you. We know that our Orange County tribe is there, and Mamba would not have made it so far without them. It takes a tribe to raise a guide dog, from puppy sitters to training partners, and our tribe is strong. We have met so many amazing people through our years with GDA who selflessly give more of themselves than humanly possible, all to see these puppies through to graduation and watch the puppy they love leave when they find out we are puppy raisers. How can you give them back? We give them back because we know that they are meant for bigger things, much more than what we can provide. I probably say this about every puppy we have brought home from GDA, but Mamba is extra special, and we knew it from the get-go. There was not a single person who met Mamba that was not amazed by his dedication and concentration when he was working, especially the people who didn't know he was underneath the table because he was so quiet and well-behaved. We have a basketball theme named for our puppies in training, and Mamba was named after the one and only Kobe Bryant. The black Mamba lives on and is clearly making his namesake proud. Also, a big thank you to Sepulveda Building Materials for sponsoring Mamba and to the Orange County Group for sponsoring his harness. Mamba, continue to do amazing things, and by amazing things, we mean the little things that most of us take for granted. May you guide Mark safely across streets, in and out of buildings, and wherever, wherever else he may need to go. You have always made us so proud. Mark, Mamba works hard and naps hard too. He is just as happy working all day as he is to nap all day in the sun. My family and I wish you both happiness, longevity, and success as a team. Thank you. All right, guys. Next, I'd like to introduce Giselle Herman. Giselle is 58 and lives in West Covina, California with her husband. She has two adult kids. She is a retired public nu health nutritionist with the WIC program. This is Giselle's second guide dog, both from GDA. In her off time, she makes jewelry, and currently there are some jewelry uh, charm bracelets in the, uh, the GDA gift shop if anybody's interested. Uh, she loves the Dodgers and loves uh, continuing education. And she does a lot of continuing education with the Braille Institute, both online and when they open back up, sh hopefully shortly. Uh, Giselle was paired with Livia, a female black Labrador retriever. She was raised by Denise Taylor. Uh, actually, have a Hi, everyone. Hey. Gosh, it's so good to be here. I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> I didn't even think I was going to cry. <laughs> well, I have to thank GDA and Tender Loving Canines for putting this great team together. And thank everyone for um, putting Libby and I together. I had to retire my girl last year, and it was it was a challenge. You know, you don't realize how much a guide dog helps you until you don't have one. Sorry, guys. Anyway, Libby is great. She helps me cross streets confidently and safely and gets me to the other side in one piece. <laughs> she is so loving and sweet and gives kisses all the time. She is so brave. We go up escalators and elevators. We've ridden trains and buses and all sorts of stuff and met some very unusual people out there. 
She takes it all in stride, thank goodness. Anyway, I just want to thank everybody. Guide Dogs of America, TLC, our awesome instructors, Sean and Sydney, who got us all working together for three weeks, and uh, it, I'm sure it was challenging. <laughs> but anyway, it was an awesome experience. Thank you to the puppy raisers who spend so much time, months and years, raising these great guys up and then have to give them back. So anyway, thank you guys. Hi. Livia was my first puppy raising experience. She's so smart and loving. And for the first for the sixteen months that I had her, she went everywhere with me. Oh God. <laughs> And everywhere she went, people loved her. She was always interested in going places. Um, everyone that she came into contact with admired her good manners and her obedience. With my family, my friends, our OC group, and GDA, Livia was able to experience advanced class where we got to switch pups for a week, the puppy development te uh, trainers, the OC group on the whole, along with our amazing OC leaders. GDA and all those people mentioned have created a way to spend my retirement with the hope of giving to others. I'd also like to thank the trainers of Livia Although I thought she was pretty perfect when I turned her in for training, there's always some doubt as to whether she'll have what it takes to become a working guide dog. I'm so thankful that they were, be ab were able to train her to do what it takes. I've heard Livia went on furloughs to other pu puppy raisers' homes during her training time, and although I don't know who they are, I want to thank them and I hope they enjoyed Livia as much as they did. I got to see and play with Livia on Tuesday. She's so happy. Next, I'd like to introduce Karen Lamone. Karen is 69 and lives on an active uh, ranch. She has horses and cattle uh, in Whitney, Nebraska. She is married with three adult sons, grandkids, and great-grandkids. Uh, Karen is a substitute teacher for the local school district and works at Fort Robinson. A male yellow Labrador cross Roscoe was raised by the, the Hoburger family, represented today by Hannah. Uh, yeah, um, you know, uh, Whitney, Nebraska, uh, population 88, <laughs> um, and we live about six miles from that. Uh, we're very close to the Wyoming border and very close to the South Dakota border, so we're clear up in the northern, uh, northwestern part of Nebraska. Uh, <laughs> we have, uh, our closest neighbor is two miles away. Uh, our mailbox is a mile away. Uh, 
feel way more prepared in helping him get, get adjusted up at his forever home here. Thanks to Sean and Sydney uh, and everybody else. This is a really fine-tuned machine, uh, GDA, I mean. Um, Roscoe and I are a lot alike. We like to stop and smell the flowers. Uh, <laughs> But I do, I do think that my puppy raisers uh, need to be uh, identified here. They did such a good job. That would be Marie and Brian and our main girl, Hannah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was also told there's about 50 on staff and almost 500 uh, volunteers. And it's unbelievable what you guys do and keep on doing it. Um, Roscoe and I are going to keep going. He's, uh, we work around horses, uh, both at home and, uh, or <laughs> more cows, I guess. But at, at work, we have a lot of horses, and we do tours on a horse-drawn wagon. So if you're ever in western Nebraska, stop by Fort Robinson State Park and look me up. But thank you very much. Roscoe and I are going to do the future just one step at a time, and he's very good at that. Thank you so much. Hi, so two years ago, sorry, like this, <laughs> Stephanie called me and said my first guide dog was passing and then he had a match. But along with that call, Stephanie also said there was another puppy waiting for me. <laughs> my second puppy, and statistically I thought, hmm, well if one passed, maybe this one wouldn't, and he'd come live with me and live out his little puppy fantasies for the rest of his life. But he said no. He said that he was going to be working with Karen, and little did I know that he was going to be working with her. And I'm so happy to be standing up here for the second time in a row with Roscoe and Karen. <laughs> I'm so thankful that he wasn't meant for the normal life, and I loved him so much, and I still love him. And I know that he loves me, but I know that he was meant to love Karen. I said I wasn't going to cry. <laughs> Karen? <laughs> I know that you two will have the best life together because Roscoe will bring that special little personality with him wherever he goes. I'm going to miss him all the way in Nebraska, but just know that my family and I wish you all the best in this new journey you're starting today. All right, I'd like to, lastly but not leastly, I'd like to introduce Vernus Norris. Vernus is 67, retired, living in the Moreno Valley, California, with her partner Earl. And she has three adult children and grandchildren. This is Vernus's 10th guide dog, uh, with most of them being from GDA. Smitherman, uh, represented today by Diana. Good morning, everyone. It is a good day. I want to thank God, first of all, for giving me the strength through this class. 
Um, this was the tenth time for me in class, and this was the hardest one of all. Me not having usable sight anymore, I had to totally depend on Brazzle. And it is hard, but it's better than a cane. So, you know, <laughs> you, 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 with Sean, with me, I love you, Sean. And Sydney, I love you, Sydney. They helped us a lot. They didn't really hold our hands so much, but they would talk to us a lot. Come to my voice. Come to my voice. Oh, and they would, they would say to me, give them some room, Bernice. Give them some room. Give them some room. So I'm going to be hearing those words in my head when we go out. I'm so thankful to GDA. I am. This has been a journey, and the journey will continue. And I really, really want to thank my partner, Earl, for without him, a lot would not be possible. So thank you. Good morning. Brazel came to us after a frantic call from Stephanie Fallon saying, we are getting eight puppies we didn't know about. They will be arriving tomorrow, going into our you take one. Sure. What do we name them? Well, we haven't decided yet. We'll get back to you. So a few days later, we got an email saying, we decided these eight puppies are going to be our island puppies. So please name your puppy after an island. OK. Anybody ever look how, how many islands there are in this world? There's a whole lot of them. So I decided at the time, my father, who was suffering from Alzheimer's, had just put into hospice care. So I thought I wanted to name him something Irish in honor of my dad's Irish heritage. And I am also a big fan of folklore and mythology. So I googled islands and Irish folklore. My answer was nine islands total, one of them being Irish. I said, OK. The island is called High Brazel. It's a mystical island in Irish folklore that if you are not blessed, you will not be able to see the island. The name Brazel means Isle of the Blessed. What a perfect name. <laughs> he has just been a totally laid back, easygoing puppy. He has absolutely spoiled me on behavior. He was my seventh puppy. My eighth puppy that I currently have is totally the opposite. <laughs> totally. <laughs> when we met Monday night, the big question that Bernice kept asking me, OK, I want to know everything he did bad. I honestly couldn't tell her anything he ever did that was bad. He was just there. He didn't even raise the energy level in the house. Well, Thursday afternoon, we had our Zoom painting class, since we can no longer have it in person. And I told the gals that she had asked that. And every one of them in chorus said, he was perfect. He never did anything bad. <laughs> so here we are. So I hope that he carries on his blessings to Bernice and leads her safely through life. And I want to congratulate all the graduates here on going home with their new best friend. Congratulations, class 416.
or 417. I would like to now uh, welcome back up to the stage Russ, as he has a flag presentation. Do you want this back? Uh, no, that's okay. Well, first of all, I just want to take a second and tell you guys uh, that uh, we have an employee leaving TLC, but uh, I've gotten to know her, and she's she's an amazing person. And all those folks that uh, have TLC dogs know Lisa Swenning, and she's leaving us uh, for another job opportunity. But you know, without the great employees that we have, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. How about a big round of applause for Lisa? She's in the back there. I gotta get some housekeeping out of the way, I'll forget it. First of all, the store's open. Lisa, where are you? Lisa back there would kill me if I didn't say that, so there you go. The store's open, so make sure you go in and buy all your, 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 your guide dog stuff. Um, next up, uh, when this is over, after the flag presentation, I ask that you uh, that stay seated until the students get up and dismiss. There will be no tours today, obviously, with COVID still going on. So that's my housekeeping. Did I miss any housekeeping stuff, guys, before, you, before I get off the housekeeping stuff? Okay. How, how about a big, giant round of applause for all the veterans in the crowd? So I'm going, to get, I'm going to get through this without tearing up. This is usually the one that tears me up a little bit. My, wife, my wife's been laughing at me lately about the crying thing I got going on, but that's okay. Uh, it shows emotion. It's what they've given up for this country. That's why I get a little emotional over it. And uh, I, I have the utmost respect for everybody that fought for this country. So with that, I'd ask Eric and Service Dog Astro, come on up. Come on up here. Well, listen, besides the dog, we're going we're gonna to present you with a flag for your service. Eric, uh, you're a veteran, you're a Marine veteran. I, w I just want a big, giant round of applause for this guy, huh? <laughs> From Guide Dogs of America, for your generous service to this country, I'm proud to give you this flag. dog Addy, why don't you come on up? Yeah. Christina, I just want to take a second and thank you for all the service that, uh, and all that you've done for this country, keeping us free, keeping us safe. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much, and hope you enjoy the flag. Next up, Nate, uh, we have Navy and Air Force veteran Becky Griffin. Becky, come on up. And guide dog L L L Letty. Uh, we have the honor and privilege of having Navy and Air Force veteran Becky Griffin in our guide dog class. Thank you for, all, for your service and all that you've done for this country. All right. Appreciate it. And from Guide Dogs of America, I want to present you with this flag for your faithful service. And can you hold that okay? All right. Um, I'm going to take a picture. I'll bring this to you, okay?
LA County allows us to um, continue the outside graduations or hopefully inside one of these days. Just keep coming back, keep spreading the word. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on TikTok, whatever that is. Uh, figure it out. Um, we're on all that social media platform. It helps out. Uh, your donations are always greatly appreciated. You want to do events, see Yvette. Where's Yvette? Yvette's right there. Uh, you, you know, everybody thinks it's hard to do an event. It's not. Uh, it, whatever you like, if you like riding motorcycles like me, or you like to shoot, or you like to golf, or you like to swim, or run, or whatever the heck you like, you can turn it into an event. You can raise money for Guide Dogs of America, uh, and anything you do is greatly appreciated. Every dollar counts. Thank you. Have a great day.